Hello again. It's me, Peter Scott. With some of you all who didn't see part one, I was talking about Kingdom and I was also explaining that, you know, I don't really go by titles, but if you want to put a title on me, it will be Prophet Peter Scott, but I'll just stick with Peter Scott. But, of course, I do accept my calling. But I'm going to continue with Kingdom. But first, what I like to do is also always reveal to you all the revelations and dreams that the Lord Jesus Christ has been revealing unto me. This one is talking about the elements. He gave me this dream October, between October 23rd and 24th of 2009. And the dream goes as follows. I, Peter Scott, dream that I was someplace where they were showing the elements on the screen. You know, elements such as sun, such as the sun and outer space and things of that nature. Immediately, I myself was in space. I found myself up close, very, very close, staring at the sun. It was a huge, gigantic orange fireball, but I didn't feel the heat it was emitting. It looked beautiful. All of a sudden appeared many different galaxies and stars, and I saw what appeared to be a black hole. But this wasn't a black hole. It looked like some type of open portable with aqua and white colored lights. It was an awesome sight to see. I later found myself back where I was viewing the screen, and there was a man explaining what was going on. Then the dream shifted. I was in my grandmother's neighbor. I was in my grandmother's neighbor backyard, and I was on this wooden platform. I was on one side, and another guy was on the other. We started to battle because only one of us could rule and preach on that platform. The other guy got mad and tore a piece of a page out of the Bible, and on that page it read, power. And I looked at him and shook my head while saying, look what you did. He tried to stick it back together with his spit. And immediately, a voice said, you must have power, light, and truth to preach his word. The other guy, after hearing this, grew discouraged and left the platform, and I alone was standing. And um, this is a book. I want y'all to think I'm just reading anything, but the book here, my notebook, it's the date, if you can see that, you know, um, like I told the viewers in part one, I always um, keep my notebook and my tape recorder, you know, on the side of my bed so that whenever the Lord or the angels visit me, give me messages from the kingdom, what he wants to relate to his people, you know, I write it down, you know, I record it, because, um, I don't want to just be lazy and go straight to sleep and then forget it and then, you know, be crying to God, Lord, show me that again, show me that again. We have to be obedient. Whenever he shows us something, we have to be obedient and act right away because, you know, we don't want him to, to pass us by. <clears throat> now let's get into kingdom teaching. As I was talking about kingdom, how a king owns everything in the land, from the territory, the water, the lake, rivers, anything in this territory that belongs to the king. Now, let's look at some definitions of kingdom. A king is also considered as lord. What is a lord? It means one having power and authority over others, a ruler by hereditary right or preeminence to whom service and obedience are due. I just got done talking about obedience. It's due. You deserve obedience. An owner of land or other real, real property, the male head of a household, husband, God, Jesus, a man of rank or high position, that's Lord. That's why God and Jesus is considered as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. King of Kings, because we are kings, believe it or not. You don't have to be sitting upon a throne just to be a king. If God called you a king, you are a king. Okay? That's another part of kingdom. Whatsoever the king says goes. Whatsoever the king says out of his mouth becomes a law. That's why the king words are so powerful. If he says something, it is recorded and it is done. 
And sometimes, not only he can change it, if it's a rightful, benevolent king, whatever he say out of his mouth, not even he can change it. Because that's how powerful a king's words are. Check this out. <clears throat> king of kings, Lord of lords. We are kings. He has made us kings. That's why we made in God's image and his likeness, because we're just like him. I wish most Christians can act just like who they are. They are kings. King of kings. We are kings. He's king of us. And Lord of lords. He is Lord over us. He is Lord of the lords. Now, another deep definition for Lord is, you know, land lord. That's why we pay rent for those who have apartments. You pay your rent to the landlord. Why? Because he's owner of the land. He owns the land. He is landlord. And if anything happens in that apartment building, guess whose responsibility it is? It's not yours. It's a landlord's responsibility. He has to fix it. Isn't that awesome? Because he's lord of the land. So, the spiritual side of this is, whenever something going on in our life, the Lord, that's why we take our burdens and our problems to the Lord, and we leave them there, because it is not our responsibility, it is His. He has to fix it. He is the Lord over us. You know, we are lords, we own things that He has given us, but He's Lord of lords and King of kings. Alright? Now, some other kingdom definitions and terms that I want to give you all are governor and government. Governor is also a kingdom word. That's why Jesus said that, um, matter of fact, in the book of Isaiah, where it talks about, and unto you a child is born. You know, it says, and the governor shall be on his shoulders. The government shall be on his shoulders. Governor means one that exercises authority, especially over an area or group. A member of a group that directs or controls an institution or society. Government means the act or process of governing, authoritative direction or control. Now, in kingdom, how can I break this down? Let's see here. In a kingdom, you have your king, queen, you have your governors, and you have your citizens. Right? Now, as I stated earlier about kingdom and territory, remember, the more territory a king has, the stronger the king. So, how does he get more territory? By colonization. Colonization is when you have a land, there's people already living in that land, and you send your governor to that new land or new territory, and you colonize it by making those people in that territory, you either colonize that land either by, um, by war or by force, or you take it over, or anything of that nature, but you send your governor over there, you take away their way of doing things, and you give them your way of doing things. For example, you go to a country or to a certain city or place, and if you colonize that, instead of them drinking, let's say, pop, now they're drinking tea. Instead of them speaking their language, now they're speaking your language. Instead of them wearing their kind of clothes, now they're wearing your kind of clothes, because you colonize it. That place is now literally transformed into where that governor came from. That place has now been transformed, and now it's just like where the governor came from. Now that king owns this territory, and they are just like him and his people. He got that land now. And he does that same thing to the next land. They become just like him and do everything that they do. Then the next place. Then the next place. That's what God decided to do when he created the earth. Make earth just like heaven by colonization. And who did he do this through? His son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to get into that more on part three.